Hey guys, you'll recall that there was a time when I said that perhaps, perhaps one day I will review Dragon Ball Evolution in full to completely dismantle this uh, ridiculous claim that as a movie, it was an okay movie. There really wasn't that much wrong with it. It just sucked as an adaptation. Well, <laughs> well, fasten your seatbelts. Um, I've basically been challenged by somebody. And, of course, he left himself an out in case I did do this. And I'm going to expose his little out before I do do this. Um, he's basically going on and on about how as much as I complained about the Justin Bieber fan base being cult-like... The Dragon Ball protest was just as much a cult. In fact, we probably do more death threats and so on and so forth than the Bieber fans do. Yeah. Um. So. This argument escalated, and then he went on to Dragon Ball Evolution. And frankly, the fact that the guy's still feeling the need to drag this into a conversation that long after it shows how much he is in fact into it although he tries to fake being a passive observer on the whole situation but the point is he says that um you know it was a it was a good movie uh in his opinion it was a good movie um i said that from a purely objective standpoint there were there was some very bad acting there were a lot of plot holes in it um he dared me to point one out so um i figure what better time than to you know what set aside all the dragon ball stuff completely forget what it's based on even though it is based on this contrary to his claim that you know they're making a completely original thing not trying to follow the series even though they use all the names of the characters from the series and the attacks from the series and the dragon balls from the series and you know you know how this goes right um and, of course, you know, their claims that they feel that their characters are very similar to what they were in the anime and manga, and that they feel that this is an accurate and faithful adaptation, despite being just slightly improved and muscled up. You know, we're, we're going to cast that aside. We're going to look at this as Dragon Ball Evolution, completely based on nothing. So let's begin, shall we? First and foremost, we have one of the most cliché intros in the history of clichéd intros. We have the whole thousands upon thousands of years ago, some warlord from space led an ancient space army to attack the people of Earth during our primitive times and nearly conquered us and or wiped us out. Then, these seven mystic fellows create this technique known as the Mafuba, which seals him away for 2,000 years exactly for some unknown reason, and his disciple, his pupil, the mighty Uzaru just suddenly vanishes once Master's gone. You know, just disappears, poof, thin air, no one knows what happened to him. And so on and so forth. So as this story advances, we then come across an extremely awkward close-up of Goku, our young protagonist, who is training with his grandfather. Now, as they are training in some, frankly, over-the-top wire-foo martial arts, um, you know, uh, this and that happens, ridiculous over-the-top stuff happens, uh, he gets blown off the wires into giant ostrich eggs that are multicolored, just laying in a pile somewhere. Gets up, cleans himself up, goes in, and promptly begins whining. Because he is supposedly so special, yet he doesn't have these special powers. But he doesn't want them in the first place. Because he just wants to be normal, fit in, get the girl, so on and so forth. Yeah, real likable protagonist so far. Anyways. Our hero gets to high school. Our hero gets very upset because his little bike gets run over. It is frankly ridiculous and looks like a motorized 10 speed but that's beside the point and nearly gets into a fight with the school bully who calls him of all things Giko and hates him for no apparent reason other than the fact that he's supposed to kid looks like them dresses like them acts for the most part like them and yet they just hate him why I don't know Meanwhile, somewhere out there, we find that there is a giant airship floating around, doing God knows what, a mysterious cloaked figure flying in it, 
dropped some sort of ball. Now, one would think that you're supposed to expect that this ball is what causes the carnage in the village below. However, if you notice, you actually watch the thing fall. The camera keeps up with the thing. The thing eventually just somehow disappears from your line of sight. So either the camera passed it or something happened. The village is already in chaos. It's been burning. It's pretty clearly from a ground invasion. This is hardly anything like a bomb went off. I mean, I mean, you know, definitely not in the middle of the village, that's for sure. I mean, you got sides of huts blowing off, fires here and there, but you got a whole ton of survivors for something that's supposedly such a devastating blast. <sighs> and, meanwhile, down there, some sort of leather bondage chick is running around with a gun, hunting for people, wanting Dragon Balls. Or what we later find out are Dragon Balls. Anyways, not the point. Uh, then we cut back to class, where our hero is fantasizing about the girl that we just saw one time, and apparently he doesn't even know her name, sucking on a strawberry. Sexual fantasies. There we go. That, that, that's a good way to establish a good, clean kids movie, right? Which is what it was billed as, supposedly. Um, yeah. Oh. So. <laughs> I'm trucking right along here. Yeah, um, kid gets out of class, sees that the girl that he likes is having trouble. Oh, oh, I skipped something. Excuse me. We find out that his grandfather warned him about the evil Namics, which were a race of people that tried to destroy the planet so long ago. <sighs> yep. Interesting. So, we're recapping what we already knew. Why? I don't know. Apparently to give it credence that... I don't know. Anyways. Completely unnecessary recap. But, moving right along. The girl that he likes, whose name he doesn't even know. Or we're led to believe whose name he doesn't even know. Um, cannot get her locker open. And so, he decides to, with the sheer brilliance he possesses, Blow open all her lo all the lockers in the freaking hallway. Yes, the guy who has marginal, if any, experience manipulating his key is, in fact, early on, he couldn't do it. So now, suddenly, he sees this girl struggling with her locker, and whoosh! Plus, so powerful that, boom, all the lockers get blown open. How clever. And he freaks out, tries to run away. She catches up with him. And this girl, who you've seen looking at him with a frankly mix of pity and disgust on her face when she sees him getting picked on, all of a sudden is into him because he has powers. Not shallow at all. And uh, just out of nowhere, blurts the line, just because I'm Chi Chi doesn't mean, just because my name is Chi Chi doesn't mean I'm stupid. Not sure what sense that's supposed to make. Seriously. Um. Unless they're stupid enough not to understand that the name is supposed to be a food pun. But, you know, that's a side. That's a side. The line in and of itself, though, by itself standing alone, made really no sense. So, trucking past that. Whew. Uh, oh, wow. Trucking past that. She invites him, the guy who she just met and insulted her name by saying that it's kind of a stupid name, yet it's not a stupid name because it's her name, to her birthday party as well. Which, of course, happens to be that same night as his birthday. Oh, joy. Meanwhile, his grandfather, who is cooking this giant feast and preparing to give him a gift, um... Or, no, wait, you came earlier. I missed that. I'm sorry. My apologies again. Um, <laughs> been two years since I watched it. Um, yeah. Grandpa gives him this Dragon Ball earlier. Tells him what it is. That it's a very powerful object. That he needs to keep it close to him. So on and so forth. So, kid upstairs. Getting ready. 
greases his hair back, it springs back up. Everyone's supposed to find this uproariously funny. I found it mostly tedious at best. Not even really funny, mostly just lame. Little kids might find it entertaining. And that's about all they'd actually laugh at. Except for the five-year-olds, which would laugh at one other thing that came later. But anyway. Huh. <sighs> so... He's getting ready to go to this party, completely blows off his grandfather, who he knew was cooking him a meal, grabs the ball, and leaves. Grandpa doesn't really know where he went, and he's kind of hurt that the kid left. Anyway, kid gets to the party. Kid remembers that he promised his grandpa that he wouldn't fight when the bullies start trying to pick a fight with him. So he decides to do an over-the-top, unnecessarily slowed-down dodge fest. Dodge, 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 make them hit each other, oh yes, classic fun, ha ha ha, he he. And then, of course, these guys are all highly proficient in martial arts out of nowhere. Suddenly doing flying kicks, um, so on and so forth, trying to hit the guy. And of course he's, you know, just flipping right by it, this and that. You know, they pick up frigging poles, and they're swinging it. Um, major continuity error. You can see at one point when they both pick up poles and swing them at him. Yes, you know, and while they're swinging these lethal metal poles at his head, nobody thinks to, you know, call the cops or try to step in and break it up. You know? But anyway, moving on. Major continuity error when he's sitting there flipping between two, which one of which is swung just perfectly high enough, one of which is swung just perfectly low enough. You can see there's a clear gap by at least... This much on the screen between their face, and I mean they're like about this tall each, and this much of a gap, so. Clear gap between the reach, you know, toward each other's face and um, hip. And yet, of course, the fa you know, the one connects with the face, the other connects with the hip, and they both drop. Then, of course, the head bully comes out, get, flies into a rage after the kid taunts him, tries to smash Goku again, and in some sort of fit of insane rage, doesn't seem to realize... He's smashing his own car, which any brain-dead idiot would figure out after the first dent. You know? Seriously. And if he's in that much of a murderous rage that he's going to be smashing up his own car and not even realize it, I highly doubt that once he does get a good look at it and realize it's his car that he's just going to stop trying to beat the crap out of the mouthy little punk who just made him smash up his car. Which, of course, in the very end, has to have all four tires explode for absolutely no reason, and the glass in the windows that is left shatter out. You know, just goes. And, of course, Shallow Girl is so deeply impressed and wooed by this. Anyways, moving along. Grandpa's back at home, apparently eating something or playing with something, I don't quite remember, and all of a sudden just snaps his head up because he knows something's coming, Shuriken come flying at him. He deflects them with his pole, which is about the only time you ever actually see the pole um, being actually used. Uh, um, and yes, very short fight. Um, motions for the assassin chick, the bondage assassin chick, to come at him again, and she doesn't. And big hooded dude from before walks in. Who he identifies as Piccolo. Looks around, says, it's not here. Turns around, goes to leave, stops uh, Gohan, Grandpa Gohan from uh, rushing him with a force choke, slams him back into the wall, walks out, and of course does the Sith grab on the house and makes it collapse. Meanwhile, Dunce Boy, who's trying to make time with the girl, suddenly, magically, out of nowhere realizes something is wrong with my grandpa. Takes off running. Manages to get there in a very short amount of time. Sees that his grandfather is dying. Can't even muster tears at the old man's death. Just buries him and is shaking his head heavily sighing. Goes in, grabs the stuff, finds the stuff that clearly alludes to the series that they're of course not trying to follow. <sighs> Whatever. Find, figures out that he's supposed to go meet this Master Roshi guy. And so sets off to find him and tell him that Piccolo has returned. Meanwhile, he is accosted by a chick with guns, who looks like something out of a freaking Terminator film. 